My name is Heather. I am a volunteer with Save the River. And today I'd like to read to you Haas, the Great Blue Heron, the beginning of an adventure. This story was written by Julianne Flora with the final illustrations painted by Diane Bauer, her mother. Now, Julianne wrote this book or her first draft of this book over 20 years ago when she was a student. It was a school project. She wrote the book, at that time made her own sketches, and then when the assignment was over, she packed the book away in her shoebox, stored it under her bed, until over 20 years later, when she teamed up with Save the River to author this beautiful story. Haas, the Great Blue Heron, mm -hmm. the beginning of an adventure. This book is dedicated for Jeanette, Kelsey, Nina, and River Rats, young and old. The St. Lawrence River runs through us, unites us, makes us one. May your love for the river lead you to explore the endless wonders of nature. In a quiet cove on the mighty St. Lawrence River, high in the branches of an old pine tree, a large, flat, round nest sat. A heron sat in the nest, patiently waiting for a little blue egg to hatch. Soon, very soon, thought Heron, my little chick will hatch. It will need a name. Whatever will I name it? A common tern landed on the edge of the nest. Squawk! Hello, greeted tern. Hello to you, replied Heron. If you don't mind my asking, said tern, I've been watching you for some time and you haven't moved an inch. Aren't you bored? No, I'm not bored, replied the heron. I am waiting for my egg to hatch. Did you know the great blue heron can stand 50 inches tall from head to tail? This tall bird has black eyebrows, a long yellow bill, its neck feathers drop down in a way that look much like a necklace. I think waiting for anything is boring, said Turn. I think of ways to busy myself, replied Heron. From my nest, I can see fish as they swim, spiders making webs, and ducks feeding on weeds. I watch the sky birds flying here and there and clouds changing shape. Sometimes I close my eyes and listen to the river's waves lapping on the rocky shore. Today I have decided to choose a name for my new chick. Well, said Turn, I guess that does not sound boring at all. What names have you thought of? None, answered Heron. I guess choosing a name is not going to be as easy as I thought. I have one said turn. How about Bob? Bob is a fine name, but I don't think that name would work for a young heron. It is nice though, said heron, not wanting to hurt turn's feelings. Did you know that both the great blue heron and the turn are diurnal animals? That means they are active during the day, looking for food. It was getting dark and Turn needed to catch supper before sundown. Don't worry, Heron, he said. You will find the perfect name for your chick. I have to leave now. Supper time. Good luck. With a squawk and a flap of its strong wings, Turn flew out of sight. Did you know that both mother and father heron 
take turns sitting on the nest waiting while their egg is incubating. I hope he's right, thought Heron. Just then he heard a tap, then a tap, tap, tap. The sound was coming from the egg. Looking down, Heron noticed a crack right down the middle of the blue egg. The tapping continued, and with each tap, the crack grew longer and longer until it was almost all the way around the egg. I don't think I'm going to have to wait much longer. It looks like my egg is about to hatch. The crack went entirely around the egg now. The tapping stopped. The cracked blue egg began to wobble and shake. Soon it was bouncing all around the floor of the huge nest. Then the egg became still once again. All of a sudden, the egg split wide open and a little head popped out. Out came one wing, then another. Soon, a tiny chick covered in soft feathers was sitting in the bottom of the nest. Heron was delighted to finally meet his new chick. Did you know, using an egg tooth, chick braces its legs against the inner wall of the shell and hammers away until it can hatch. I still do not have a name for my chick, thought Heron, and I'm tired from all this excitement. Tomorrow is a new day. Tomorrow I will think of a name for you. Good night, my sweet little chick, said Heron. The little chick looked up at his father and just before resting his tired head, he made a sound, a sound like this, haws. Feeling proud of his new chick, Heron pulled him under his protective wing. They both fell asleep under the clear, starlit sky. In the morning, Heron awoke. What a brilliant day. He stretched his enormous wings. Just then, he remembered Chick's first sound. Haws! The Heron exclaimed, That's it! That's the name! I will call him Haws. He watched as Fluffy Haas slept. Heron began to imagine all of the wonderful adventures they would share living in their quiet cove on the mighty St. Lawrence River. Did you know that Heron eggs hatch one at a time, usually in the order in which they were laid? Chicks remain with their parents for about three months. And this story ends with a beautiful map of the upper St. Lawrence River, which begins at Lake Ontario, travels along past Cape Vincent, Clayton, Alexandria Bay, Chippewa Bay, and on down until it meets the ocean. I hope you enjoyed this story Pause, the great blue heron, the beginning of an adventure. What a beautiful story of the heron and its friend, the tern. I built a model of a great blue heron nest. I thought it would be fun to see they're a great size. I just took sticks that I collected, put them on a mat, and measured about three feet wide so that you could see the actual size that a nest would be. Now you wouldn't see a nest down on the ground because the great blue heron nests way atop tall, tall trees. It is the only time you will spot a group of heron together. They usually are soli solitary animals, but during nesting season, they will come together 
in a few treetops located close together, build their nests. A group of nests is called a colony. The great blue heron egg, I think is about the size of a chicken egg, maybe a little bit larger. They're a greenish blue size. When the chick hatches, they have their bright yellow bill already and their fluffy beginning to their very impressive chest feathers that will grow in as they age. The great blue heron male finds the nest site, the female does the building. Then they both take turns sitting on the eggs, keeping them warm, incubating them. That process takes about 28 days before the first chick will hatch. And remember from the story, we learned that they will hatch in the order in which they were laid. And then as they grow during the summer months along the St. Lawrence River, they will stay with their parents for about three months before they take off on their own adventure. You can learn more about the Great Blue Heron and more fun classroom activities on www.savetheriver.org. One activity that I'll be posting there is a nest challenge that you might like to try in your classroom.